Hello, this is Kerrigan and I have another video for you today. Today I will be doing a review of the core watercolor paints. Um, I have two different sets and we're going to talk about the differences between the two sets. Um, first things first is I want to talk about a little bit about what makes core watercolor paint special. They use their own proprietary binder called Aquazol, which gives the paints um, a lot of flow making these paints perfect for wet on wet techniques you can kind of see in the cover and they don't lie there is a lot of flow in these paints they have a wonderful color intensity and um, they play well with traditional paints um, I mainly use Sonelia and Daniel Smith but I have a couple of core colors that I threw in there and it works out really really well uh, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about my history with the Core paints. I got these paints actually a year ago, and then a few months before that, Core actually sent me these paints to review. And the ones that they sent me were the High Chroma set uh, with a couple of colors added in. And honestly, um, I don't know if it was just me or the way that I work. I wasn't really getting the most out of them from these. So I ended up buying the set of 24 to give me much more versatility. And I actually like this set much better. Um, although I knew, do know a lot of people who prefer the high chroma set, I, I'm not one of those people. And then when this came out after that, I got this set. So that's my history with these core paints. Um, like I said, they use uh, this Aquazole binder that gives them a lot of flow. And um, if you've seen my videos where I've talked about these paints in the past, I mainly talk about how good they are if you do wet on wet techniques which I almost never do. So um, so that was part of my sort of delay in doing this review is I feel like I wasn't using them to the maximum to show their maximum. But then I was like, you know what? Let's just talk about them anyway. So here I am. Um, I, just, I did recently start doing more wet on wet. So then I got them out and I've been doing using them for whatever I feel like painting, um, you know, whatever I feel like sketching. Hold on, this is some sketches that I've done recently. Uh, these two uh, literally very recently you can see the date on that and then some uh, makers mark that I sketched out recently all right so um, so these are a couple of recent sketches so anyway so let me talk to you about um, how these paints come um, like I said this is that I have is a set of 24 but they sell sets of 6 and 12 that pretty much come in identical tins and these are going to be your small five milliliter tubes um, that you can then pour onto half pants, which is what I have done here. And you can see here that I've poured these onto half pants and that's pretty much how I use these. Um, I've traveled with these like these, they dry really well in the pan. Um, one word of caution is they do, um, when you first pour them, they do take a little bit longer to dry than you would see with some, um, traditional paints. So not as long as something like Sennelier, which will take forever and ever to dry these, but these will take a little bit longer than say Daniel Smith, which seemed to dry very, very quickly anyway. Um, but they can still be used, um, poured into a pan like this and they work really well. Um, I did hear some rumors that they maybe don't re-wet that well I didn't find that problem at all I found that they re-wet really nicely um, so maybe that was something with the early batches um, they also have this little travel set which looks like this and um, I was not that big a fan of this travel set and I will talk to you in a minute as to why um, you do get a really you know nice variety of colors with both the travel set and the 24 color set the oh let me just talk to you a little bit about pricing which is another thing to consider the 24 color set plus getting the metal tin and the magnets and all that um it came out to about 85 75 dollars um in that range um when i did it myself um the price of these i think has fluctuated a little bit Whereas this, I think I've seen it as low as 57. Um, I think I paid closer to $60 than 57, but you know, so there's that difference. And, um, and you also get the, you know, the tin already with these. Um, and it's really interesting design tin. I'm not my favorite. Um, you know, one of my main issues is the you know, size wise. I don't know if you can see, but size wise, let me close them up and show you um, size wise. I feel like the this one actually travels a little bit better, even though this one is lighter because there's fewer colors. But you can see size wise that the 24, you know, the 24 colors in the adapted tin 
are a little bit smaller, you know, size wise. So, so but that's a personal preference. If you, these, this, you know, fits nicely in the hand. You can use this up. Like I said, you can mix big and small colors. I didn't like the mixing area being in between the two. It didn't use this mixing area as much as I used this one. That's just, again, personal preference. I was like freaked out and I felt like I was going to, I don't know. I felt like I was going to contaminate colors this way. It was weird, um, but that's just me. All right. So, um, all right. So then there's this. And uh, anyway, so I was talking about the the sets that you get in the tubes. Like I said, you get a set of there's a 24 and I think that's the largest one they have so far. Um, then there's a set of 12 and then there's various sets of six. There's the high chroma that I mentioned earlier, primary and a few other sets um, that you can pull together and make yourself a much larger set if you want to build them up that way. All right. Since we've talked about all this, let's um, next we're going to do some swatching with the paints um i'm gonna swatch these colors poured from the pans um poured directly from the tubes as a, as opposed to using the the dried pans the other thing is the colors that you get are pretty much the same except for with the set of with this set of 12 um there's three colors that don't come in this larger set um that we won't be swatching that's the um transparent brown uh oxide burnt umber and the uh, pyro red medium i believe you don't get the pyro red medium you get it um, i'm just going to take a break we're going to start swatching and i'll be right back this first color is um cadmium yellow primrose and honestly this is one of my least favorite colors in the set um, it does have very interesting flow as is typical of the core colors, but it's very matte and um, it's also very opaque and I just did not like this as much as I would like your typical like lemon yellow, Hansa yellow, especially for mixing. I feel like it makes dull colors, um, but you know, it is what it is. The second color um, nickel as a yellow. I did like this one much better. Um, and definitely sort of, I wasn't really on team nickel as I know some people do use that as their warm yellow, but this definitely sort of, um, pushed me back in the direction of, you know, being like, okay, I can see the, the point of this. Um, you can definitely see the interesting flow that this has. Um, but again, I don't think that they really win here with the yellows. Um, I think they win with some of the other colors, but the yellows, I'm not sure that they are for me. Um, this is the Quinn Gold Hue. I think it's called in this set, it is called um, Quinacrylon Gold Deep is what it's called here. Um, and it's kind of sort of like uh, the original Quinacrylon Gold. This next color here is very much a, you know, you can use this, you know, in place of your Hansa Yellow Deep. Like I said earlier, their yellows are okay. Um, this one is also more opaque than, um, than I like to see. Um, this next color here is Transparent Pyral Orange, which I actually did like this color. I don't normally use oranges very often, but I did actually like this color a lot and I did end up using it, um... I think I mixed it in with the with the brown to make that that whiskey color. Anyway, this is the permanent alizarin crimson, um, which I you know I really like this Anelier alizarin crimson, uh, even though I know it's a fugitive color, and I haven't really liked the permanent alizarin crimsons all that much, but I like this one, so that that says a lot. Um, this next color is uh, cadmium red medium. Um, and while I wasn't really that impressed with their yellows, I really did like this cadmium red medium. Um, I especially like the fact that it dries really nice on the palette and some of the other brands cadmiums don't dry very well at all. And this one you can see performed really well. Um, the color had a lot of flow and it was just a very interesting color to work with. Um, there was a little bit more of a drying shift on some of these colors than than maybe I was expecting, but that's not too bad. But it wasn't like crazy amount of drying shift. Anyway, this permanent scarlet, um, it's kind of an okay color. It's a little bit more neon than I like, but again, that's more of a personal preference. Um, overall, I think it worked 
well in this set and i think it's a it's a good choice for this set to sort of add balance to the whole thing and was you know made it more usable this is quin magenta quinacrino magenta and i actually like this color um this sort of growing into it i'm used to more getting for a cool red in a set i'm used to getting quin rose but this quinacrino magenta is actually really nice um and um I, I just love the way these colors flow and the way that you can depending on when you decide to apply movement you can get a lot of very interesting effects from these colors um very quickly without like too much effort this dioxazine purple i just loved i mean i was like okay all dioxazine purples are exactly the same and i was like okay no not really this one is so powerful and it moves so much and what i like about this one is that um, even though it is very powerful and even though it does move a lot it's not overpowering and it doesn't turn blackish um you know so quickly um and it also dries a little bit paler than it looks which i actually really appreciate because quinacre because daxine purple is such a strong color now you guys know that i love my sennelier um ultramarine deep but this is actually i think this is my new second favorite well third favorite ultramarine um it's just a really nice very very granulating ultramarine i normally when i bl blend to grays i will use cerulean blue but in the case of the core i can just use the regular ultramarine blue and get an extremely granulating um get an extremely granulating gray as well as just getting very granulating other colors speaking of cerulean blue this is the um the core cerulean blue and whereas the ultramarine blue is extremely granulating, the cerulean blue is it's not as granulating as some other cerulean blues i have tried and for me the whole point of cerulean blue is that it's extremely granulating i mean it's okay it's good but it's not the most granulated cerulean blue out there whereas ultramarine i would definitely put their ultramarine up there um this next one is thalo blue and i actually may switch to this thalo blue and make this my new staple thalo blue um in part because i've been using the daniel smith thalo blue and it's just so much um it's a little bit too much and this thalo blue is it's it's, it's intense you can see from here it's intense it has good flow but it's not so much that it overpowers whatever you try to mix it with and whatever you try to use it with um cobalt teal is definitely not a color that i use very often um but i actually like this one um i have it in a number of sets because they do um include it i have like a sennelier version and a few other versions but um i actually found this one to be among the most usable ones of the ones that i have um speaking of usability the next color here viridian green oh my god i think this is this might actually be more to my liking than the sennelier viridian green um, I have never been a fan of Viridian Green. I find it to be a, like if somebody took all the everything out of Thalo Green, that would be Viridian Green. But this Viridian Green is actually very good um, and it's quite usable. Um, it has a lot of color. It doesn't take, you know, years and years to re-wet. You can see here that it re-wets really nicely. It flows really nicely. Um, you can see here that it dries really nicely. So, um, so this is definitely a Viridian green that I actually recommend. I say, you know, just, you can buy this one just separately. Anyway, um, this sap green has so much yellow in it that there were times where I actually confused it for green gold. And I was like, am I using the right color? Um, because it's a much yellower sap green than I'm used to, which is not a bad thing. I found this to be a really fun sap green and I could actually, because it's so different than some of the other sap greens, I could actually put this one in a set that already had a sap green from another brand speaking of green gold which is like an antique gold i i always love green gold but i like this one a lot this one is a little bit browner than some of the other ones i have tried but the flow is really just you know it was set all the core colors apart I say it over and over again because I think it's true. If you do wet on wet, you just just get yourself a you know a bunch of core colors and just play. Um, 
and the green gold is no disappointment. This one is funny because I was using it all this time thinking it was a yellow ochre. And I was like, oh, this is a, this is a much nicer yellow ochre than I'm used to. It's not as opaque as I'm used to. Turns out it's not a yellow ochre, it's a raw sienna, but you know, um, but it's actually, this actually, I was like, you know, I was always like, what's the point of, you know, yellow ochre? It's like a raw sienna. Like I didn't understand the difference. This one really helped me to understand the difference between the two. Um, works really well. This burnt sienna is, um, it's a little bit redder than some of the other burnt siennas, but you know, it has great flow. It's really granulating. Um, and I think it works really well in a set. And honestly, I was, I wanted, I I don't, my instinct was to be disappointed that there's no burnt umber in this set, but I don't think you need it uh, with the raw umber that's in here. This is uh, this is my favorite of raw umber. Like I wasn't, this is another color where I wasn't, I didn't see the point of raw umber and I didn't use it very much, but I ended up using this raw umber because one of the books that I have called for it for one of the practice videos. And I was like, oh my God, this is a really good color. And I've just added it to my rotation now, not just raw umber, but the core raw umber to my rotation. Um, Van Dyke, um, it's a PR 101 color. It's, I don't know, you can use it in place of um, burnt umber if you wanted to have a burnt umber in this set, but I, you know, it's, it's definitely not one of my favorite colors. All right, Payne's Gray and Neutral Tint. Um, at first, when I first got the set, I was really annoyed that it came with both a Payne's Gray and a Neutral Tint. But after I had the set for a while, I totally see why they give you two because they're two different hues. And a lot of brands, the Payne's Gray and the Neutral Tint are almost identical. Um, but in this case, the Payne's Gray and the Neutral Tint are two totally different colors. The Neutral Tint is more of a black, but a very light kind of a black like not a gray but a light black if that makes any sense that sounds really confusing whereas a Payne's the Payne's gray has a definitive blue tint to it um, which is typical of Payne's gray so there's that and finally the last color I just my wife just walked in the door so that's what you hear um, the last color is the white which I didn't really use in this set um, I've been won over by buff titanium although this is the same pigment as buff titanium but this is a white if you need an opaque white this is a great um, opaque white and I actually like this one I think a little bit better than the sommelier opaque white which I have been using a little bit when I use you know when I use a white white all right next up is we're gonna do some comparison I'm gonna do my comparison charts as well as a mixing chart and we're going to compare the two the tubes and the pans um, I have this comparison chart and you'll see more of this when I do the the comparison across all the brands but for now I just want to show you this is the pan set and this is the the paint pour set and you can see that the flow is pretty much the same the just pretty much everything is about the same. There's not really a huge difference between the two. So, um, and then you can see a little bit here. There's not really a huge difference between the two. This is the pan and this is the tube. So it's really up to you to do whichever one you like best um, and whichever one you feel most comfortable with. If you like the ones where they've already done all the work for you, you can um, get this one. Uh, and if you're, you know, you like the, let's say unique, tin that they come in then you can get this one otherwise um you know it's a little bit more even though it's a little bit pricier it's a little bit more economical in the long run to get the 24 tubes um all right so so there's that and then uh the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do um let me show you again the colors that i did you can see all that just just wonderful flow um the next thing that we're going to do is i have some mixing charts here and I just want to show you some things. Um, this is the 24 color poured pan. And this is the tube set. Now you can see, let me show you the difference. You can see, hold on, let me see if I can uh, pan the screen back. I'm going to pause. Similar, one thing that I did notice, um, I noticed it more when I was making the mixing charts than when I was just, oh, I need lotion. Um, when I was making the mixing charts than when I was just using them is that it can be a little bit challenging to get the midtones just right. Let me show you what I mean. And you can see this too in the ones that core pours themselves. You can kind of see that um, because of the flow, they kind of go from dark to very light 
effect. Um, it's it's it doesn't necessarily give you always those midtones. It really depends on the color. Some colors are better at it than others. You can see right here with the diaxis scene that it very much goes from darkest to lightest without so much the midtones in between. Again, that's something you can work with, um, and it's not a deal breaker at all. It's just more challenging with these paints than with other artist grade paints, but it's not a deal breaker at all. Just something that I wanted you to be, you know, to be mindful of. Um, so anyway, so these are the two mixing charts. It's not really anything outstanding other than I just want to show you the color intensity here. And I have some other ones here. And when I do the, the comparison charts with all the other paints, you're going to see that these compare really quite favorably overall to pretty much, um, the higher end artist grade paints. Um, this is, uh, this is the Jane's ultimate mixing palette from the, tubes and this is mostly all Daniel Smith there's a few Sennelier colors but you can see the the color intensity is quite um, quite comparable here let me show you another one so that's the the Jane's um, the other one I want to show you the last one these are actually handmade paints but this is the a gallo paints and you can see the intensity the a gallo paints are some of the most intense handmade paints i've tried and this does a really good job um of sort of illustrating the the kind of the level of intensity that you get with the core paints and the last one i'm going to show you is the m gram paints um, in terms of just the full mixing chart and again we'll see all of these when i do the comparison charts but in terms of the full full mixing chart you'll see um, with the M grams, M grams have a lot of color intensity, but they're also probably the slowest drying paints out of any paints that I've tried. If you try to dry them from a tube and a lot of colors don't fully dry, I think Sennelier also has that problem. They both use gum arabic and honey. And I think that that honey element, um, adds sort of slows down the drying process. So if you want to pour and use, you know, from a tube, um, from a half pan, then I definitely recommend the core over the M grams, but just in terms of the level of the color intensity, they're pretty com comparable. I'm gonna get out the comparison chart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the cores to every other brand of paints that I've tried. Um, and that should be a lot of fun. It's my favorite part of the review, because for this part, I will be comparing, um, the core paints to, uh, pretty much every other brand of commercial um, paints that I've taken a look at. Um, so let's get started. So the reason that I compare them to literally every other brand of commercial paints I've looked at is because let's say all you have is the Cotman student grade watercolor paints. It doesn't really matter that this is a student grade and this is a high end professional grade because this is all you have. So, uh, you know, it's not as helpful to compare only to the high end professional paints because this is all you have. So that's the reason why. So this way, no matter what brand you have, if you have one of them, you can kind of see what the difference would be. So that's why I do it this way. All right, so let's get started. You can see instantly that the color intensity as well as the clean mixes, especially look at that um, much cleaner gray you can get. This is sort of a muddy, slightly muddy gray. Um, um, as well as a more vibrant green, you can kind of see instantly um, why the the cores cost what they do. And the cores the cores are among the more expensive artist grade paints. They come in they cost about the same as the Daniel Smith 15 ml tubes, but these are actually 11 ml tubes, so you do get slightly less paint, which makes them overall cost more per ml. Um, but you know, you definitely get what you pay for this is the Sennelier student grade and you can see here on top hold on let me do it this way this is the Sennelier student grade you can see the comparison um, in the core once again you see the high level of vibrancy as well as those clean mixes and that very very dark gray without necessarily having to use like a whole lot of uh, pigment there to get that super dark gray 
uh, the Sakura Koi's is once again, you, you see the difference, like why there's a difference in price. You can get some of the darker tones with the, with the, uh, Sakura Koi, but, um, but the mixes are not quite as vibrant or as clean, uh, with the Sakura Koi. Uh, next up is the White Knights, which are actually, um, interesting paints that I do have on tap to review, but I will have a full review on these at a later date, but you can see also, you, I think of the student grade paints are really some of the best student grade paints, very much, you know, close to that professional level, um, with these, uh, with the, the St. Petersburg White Knights, the Lucas, um, or the flip side is sort of the Lucas is very much the sort of the entry level of the professional paints, very vibrant, uh, especially more so than, you know, some of the truly entry level ones, you can kind of see the difference here. Um, but not quite as vibrant and not quite as intense as the cores cores. Like <laughs> it sounds kind of like the beer, but like the core watercolor paints. Um, the Winsor Newton Professional are some of my least favorite of the professional paints. I do have those paints. Um, that review is upcoming, but they've just, I just don't enjoy using them. <laughs> it's not that they're bad. It's that they're very sort of like you can see, they're sort of okay at everything and great at nothing really. So the Winsor Newton professional paints. Um, I do understand that in other regions, they're much less expensive, but here they sort of cost as much as some of these higher end paints, but they sort of deliver closer to some of the entry level artist grade paints. Um, but you, and you can see that they don't have the same vibrancy as the core. They also don't have the same flow as the core. So there's that. Um, this is the Talons Rembrandt. I was actually really impressed by the Talons Rembrandt. The Talons Rembrandt are quite expensive here in the U S but I've got a couple of sets from Jackson's and they're much more affordable, um, internationally. And I can see why people like them, especially internationally. Um, they don't quite yet have the vibrancy of the core watercolors, but they, rate very high on this vibrancy level. Um, they have really good light fastness. A lot of the colors have really nice flow. There's not that universal high flow quality that you get with the cores, but you can definitely get a lot of really interesting flow with some colors. Uh, let's see. Next one's up is the Turner's watercolor. Um, and I believe I did either the Turner's or the whole binds and I can see why people like these paints. Again, these are much more affordable in, um, in other regions than they are here in the U S but they're still pretty popular in the U S you can see that there's definitely a high level of vibrancy here. There's definitely a lot to like here, but comparatively the core still have a little bit more vibrancy than say the Turner's, but the Turner's are no slouches. The Turner's are definitely high quality professional grade paints. Um, so th th that's definitely one option. The Schmicky here in the U S are more expensive than the cores. Um, but in other regions where they may be more affordable, this is also another really good option. Um, but here in the U S I would say if you're thinking about choosing between the two, unless you have a very specific reason to go with the Schmicky Hordum, you like certain colors, you know, whatever. Um, overall, I think in the U S the, the core is still more affordable than the, uh, Hordum, uh, artist grade Schmincke paints are in the U S all right. The whole bind paints, but these are very popular, um, paints, um, especially with Japanese artists, they are much more affordable in Japan, but they, you can see that they definitely are up there in terms of the vibrancy. And these are once again, really good artist paints. And if you're in a region where the cores are expensive, the whole binds might be something for you to, to look at, uh, Though they, you know, the, the, the other thing about the, both the Holbein's, hold on, both the Holbein's and the Turner's though, um, is that both the Turner's and the Holbein's are very stationary. The paints stay where you put them. Unlike the cores where they do a lot of traveling, both the Turner's and the Holbein's stay pretty much put wherever you place them. All right, let's see. Let's see what is next. The Mission Gold, I don't have that much experience with the Mission Gold. Um, so I'm just showing you them here. I haven't really used them as much as I've used some of the other brands. 
But I just want to show you here that the vibrancy is pretty nice on the Mission Gold as well, but the core still outpaces them. And just, just this just goes to show you just the intensity level of the cores. And then we start to get to some of the brands where you can say, okay, these have a higher um, intensity level, higher vibrancy level than the cores or the same as or higher depending on the color and you know your point of view is really, um, I would say the cores are really in that top tier with the M. Graham and the, um, and the Daniel Smith. You know what I didn't see here is the Sennelier. I don't know what I did with my Sennelier chart, but I do have a chart for Sennelier. Um, Sennelier's are much more muted colors, the professional Sennelier. No, I didn't see them, huh? Uh, but anyway, you can see these are the cores right here. You can see the vibrancy level of all three of these is really quite high. And it's hard for me to say, you know, hands down, which one is more vibrant than the other. They're all really, really good. Um, the the cores, though, do excel in that flow level here. Um, and that's one of the, you know, that's because of that unique binder that they use, uh, the Aquazole binder. Uh, versus the gum arabic and gum arabic and honey um all right so i am going to be back with some final thoughts i'm going to see if i can find my sennelier comparison chart because that's my favorite brand um and i'll be right back um i just wanted to do this real quick before i get into my final conclusions this is the core up here and then this is the Sennelier. Um, you can see there isn't quite the same level of vibrancy on that first pass but where the Sennelier's really excel is in that layering. So as you put more and more layers on the Sennelier you get increasing levels of vibrancy um, that you don't get on that first pass. A certain extra pop that you get with the layering that you don't really get with the cores. So if you do a lot of layering the cores, you know, the cores can layer really well, but I definitely prefer the sommeliers over the cores in that case. And um, I bring you the Jackson's art, which in my opinion is pretty much the same as the Sennelier or Nears makes no difference. Maybe they're made in the same factory, yada, yada. I have a whole video on that and I'll put a link to that entire video. All right, so now, now we've done the full comparison. And so now the next step is just my final conclusions. This is the color chart that I made. Uh, and I just wanted to show you one last time before I get to my final conclusions. Um, the, the, the flow is absolutely one of the most, the flow and the color vibrancy, just the best things about these core paints. They are a little bit on the pricier side, especially, you know, things like this set of 12. So these are not inexpensive paints. However, if you do a lot of wet on wet, if you want that flow, and you want to be able to travel or if you just like the you know there's one thing that core does really well and core just goes out there and just tries stuff that nobody else um, is out there trying let me show you this again this tin is just crazy it's bonkers and it's so on brand for core so if you want you know if you like that sort of like um new very sort of modern take on watercolors um whereas Sennelier has a more traditional take on watercolors um and I would say probably Winsor Newton as well um Coors is not afraid to just do something modern and you know and just unique so um overall really like these paints I like the way that they um I like the way that they flow I like the way that they that they blend um i've shown you guys some of the things that i made with these paints um i think if that's something that you intend to use and you don't mind that that uh price point that you get for this you know for this just phenomenal flow then these are definitely the paints to go with um however if you are looking at you know, mainly vibrancy. Um, you, they may find other options that are slightly more affordable within your region. Um, but if if what you want is you want flow, you want vibrancy. I mean, I you know, when people say I do wet on wet, I usually just like, okay, get some cores. <laughs> like, you know, that to me, to me, that, that's the way that I think about them. Um, that doesn't mean that that's the only thing they do well. They do a lot of things really well, but that's the thing that they do phenomenally well. And just 
heads and shoulders above the crowd really stand out for that the same way that Snellier just stands out for their layering ability if you want to layer then I mean I Snellier is where you want to go um so there's that so overall really enjoy these paints um I hope you guys like this video let me know down in the comments um if you do use wet on wet what are your thoughts on wet on wet and also let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts on this um on this wild little palette here um which i definitely was as as you guys already guessed not that big a fan of but let me know down in the comments if you think i'm crazy or if you like this setup um uh all right i'll see you guys next time and don't forget uh one of the, a video of one of the cats i'll find one of the cats harass them make them go on film and thank you especially to the patrons who made it possible for me to get sets like this if you've been using those referral links keep using those referral links bookmark them save them for later they make a huge difference and they really do make videos like this possible and don't forget to like subscribe and all that and i will see you guys next time bye